I'll move on. Uh, it's a final uh, mentee question. As an organization in a green city, would you be willing to? Wow, this is like the bees flying in. <laughs> All right. Would you be willing to? All right. Many people are willing to adopt carbon reduction policies such as flexible working hours. I think we are land blessed with the most public holidays. Flexible working hours would be great. I really agree. And the second will be change your business operations to see waste reduction. And the third one was purchase products and services from green suppliers. Government has got a green procurement policy, but I'll let the panel also respond to the observation of the floor. So they're looking at flexible working hours, business operations to be more, less waste. I, I'll just make a comment on green Please, building. yes. But I think the low, low rating is probably because we have probably solved the problem. <laughs> 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 but but I, I just want to touch a bit on as cities grow, um, this, whole, this whole dream of ownership. I think as you live in this world, you start to realize that we are stewards. And, and as you get older, you try and dump your properties because you don't want to leave a debt or, or proper, you know, something to your children to worry about. So this whole myth about affordability instead of shelter, of ownership rather than rental, I think we need to break that. Now, developers don't, love, don't like me saying that, but I think the millennials are already showing that trend. They are not interested to own property to an extent. Yeah. So I think we need to start to think about it. And as you become a steward, you start to realize, you know, when, we, when we're doing green building, they taught us about life cycle analysis of a building. Actually, we analyze the wrong thing. We should life cycle analyze ourselves. <laughs> Once you realize that you don't live forever, then why do you need to own all these things? So I think, do I sound like a communist? <laughs> no, but as you start to, start to think that way, you become, you, 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 you move sustainability to sufficiency. You don't build a house with 20 rooms. You only got for two persons. <laughs> you build one room and one guest room. So you start to realize, I don't need to own it all. I can live with what I have. And I think that that, as we start to go in that direction, it, it, will, it will bring about quite radical change, yeah. especially for cities. Right. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah, so sure. if I could just say, um, you know, I, I also believe that, and uh, I, I see it myself. I mean, when my children question what I might say, and then it forces me to think about what I'm indeed saying and whether that's sound or whether that needs to be recast, rethought. Uh, within the, the scenarios team in Shell, I've made it a point to bring in younger people to add their thinking to ours. I just felt all of us were a certain age and we really needed to bring in fresh new voices. Um, I'll say one more thing about being, being green. Um, and it's really, as uh, I think the minister said, we're, we're not doing this to save the world, we're doing this to save ourselves. It's really about survival in a rapidly changing world. Uh, we have three scenarios. In one of them in Sky, uh, we meet the energy transition successfully. In the other two, we fumble through the energy transition uh, and somehow get through a major transition without quite meeting Paris. But the important point is that in every scenario, uh, that major energy transition happens. And when, and when something happens in every scenario you can think of, that means that something is an inevitability. It will happen regardless, and you had better be prepared for it. Right.